Metal Gear Rising has had quite a tumultuous development cycle. It began its life as a game developed entirely by Kojima Productions and was supposed to bridge the gap between Metal Gear Solid 2 and 4, with gameplay that focused on fast-paced action and a sword that can literally cut through anything. After a promising trailer at E3 2010, we really didn't hear anything about the game. A short documentary revealed that the team at Kojima Productions were struggling with the balance of stealth and action and with the challenge of enabling the player to cut through anything in the environment. So, it got cancelled. Then it got uncancelled. Kojima decided to hand over the reins of development over to Platinum Games, who of course were the minds behind the fantastic and frenetic action game Bayonetta. And thus, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance was born. Did Platinum make a game that lives up to the Metal Gear name? Let's find out. The story of Metal Gear Rising actually takes place three years after the events of Metal Gear Solid 4. Raiden is being contracted by the private military company known as Maverick to help train an African nation's army and help protect its prime minister, Nemani. Unfortunately, their caravan gets attacked by a group of rival PMCs known as World Marshal. Nemani gets killed for bringing too much peace to the world, thereby slowing the war economy. Raiden gets his ass kicked by a samurai amusingly named Sam and comes back a couple weeks later to exact some titular revenge. If you're expecting a Metal Gear Solid quality story out of this one, let me just stop you right there. While Revengeance does touch upon some plot elements that were explored throughout the Metal Gear Solid games such as child soldiers, the war economy, and the philosophy of war, the story here is largely meant to set the stage for the action. And like the rest of the game, it feels a little bit rushed. But if you were expecting the story to deliver some extremely badass and awesome moments of Raiden slicing up stuff, running along walls using rockets like lily pads, and body slamming mechs the size of skyscrapers, well then buddy, let me tell ya, Platinum's got you covered. In a game like this though, one can probably forgive the story for being more about the spectacle than the substance. The combat is the real deal maker here, and fortunately the combat is very good, if a little strange at first. Metal Gear Rising's combat is very unique compared to other action games and that may throw some people off for a while. Your goal in each fight is really not to just continuously damage foes until they die. You could do that, but you'll quickly feel like you're not playing the game correctly. Your goal is actually to beat up an enemy enough until they become vulnerable to an instant kill attack known as Zandatsu. A Zandatsu, which literally means cut and take, is performed by using blade mode to slow down time, using the right stick to line up a slash, and swinging your sword so that you attack the location of an enemy's self-repair unit, killing the enemy instantly and restoring your entire life bar and blade power meter. While the most basic enemies can be zandatsued immediately, most enemies require you to systematically remove limbs before you're able to hit their weak point. This is where Ryan's large assortment of moves comes in handy. Light sword attacks are mapped to the X button, while heavier and secondary weapon attacks are mapped to the Y button. Specific combos are more for style than for any particular use, so you could really get through the game simply by mashing one button and occasionally throwing in a heavy attack whenever you feel like it. But man, these combos are stylish! Another thing that makes Metal Gear Rising so drastically different from other similar games is the fact that there's no real dodge or dedicated block mechanic. Your only way of avoiding attack is by using your ninja run to quickly move around or by parrying, which is done by tilting the control stick towards an enemy attacking and simultaneously pressing the light attack button. And yeah, there is a move that you can also purchase that does a little attacking sidestep, but its use is limited. So when you put it all together, you have an interesting combat system that combines two game mechanics that on their own would kind of make for a game that's either too hard or too easy, but when put together, they kind of cancel each other out. On one hand, the fact that every enemy is an opportunity to restore your entire life bar seems like it would make the game really easy. But then on the other hand, the game is made very difficult by the fact that you can't really do any kind of effective evasive maneuvers, and the only way you can block is by correctly reading an enemy attack and tying the parry. Raiden also has access to an arsenal of sub-weapons that you can find in the field like rocket launchers, various types of grenades, and of course cardboard boxes. It's, it's a box. How's that gonna help? Unfortunately, these feel like a way of shoehorning the Metal Gear brand into a game that, by all accounts, is nothing like a Metal Gear game. Stealth is almost always completely optional, and is mostly just used to get an instant kill on a tough enemy. Rocket launchers and grenades are slow to equip, 
and the rocket launchers especially are annoying to aim due to hypersensitive aiming controls. Raiden's main arsenal of weapons is also somewhat lacking. Raiden has a total of 4 weapons that he can equip into his secondary weapon slot. He can attach his main sword to his feet, use a bendable staff, an electric scythe that he can use to pull himself towards enemies, and a gigantic but ridiculously slow scissor blade. Secondary weapons in an action game should be what give the game variety. Each time you get one, you should be excited to look at the moves list and see what kinds of new combos you can pull off. Unfortunately, this is not the case in Metal Gear Rising. The tactical Psy is really only good for stunning and pulling Raiden closer to enemies, and the Scissor Blade is just too slow to be useful or fun to use in the kinds of fast-paced battles found in this game. So unless you like very situational weapons with one purpose, expect to primarily use either the Mistral Staff or the Feet Blade. These secondary weapons are each obtained after beating one of the big bosses of the game, and these battles are where Metal Gear Rising shines the most. Each battle is wonderfully set up by great cutscenes that hype the player up for the battle, they're peppered by just the right amount of scripted moments that will make you go holy shit, they've each got incredible music that is sure to get your blood pumping, they're all challenging, and most importantly, they're each a lot of fun. The game is also littered with collectibles, little easter eggs, and most importantly, computers that unlock VR missions. The VR missions are basically secret missions that can be played from the main menu and challenge Raiden with clearing tough sets of enemies, getting through areas without being seen, and more things along those lines. They're definitely worth tracking down since the VR missions offer hardcore players some of the biggest challenges in the game. I really wanted to be blown away by Metal Gear Rising. Platinum Games is my favorite developer of the last 10 years, and I was so excited when I heard that they were going to develop Rising. The reality is that the game feels a little bit rushed. The first four missions of the game are fantastic. They're lengthy, they introduce a bunch of new enemy types constantly to keep combat fresh, the aforementioned boss battles are fantastic, and the combat feels great. Then, right when you feel like you're in the second half of the game, you find that mission 5 is just an escape through sections of a previous level, mission 6 is a single boss fight, and mission 7 is basically just the final boss. To call Metal Gear Rising front-loaded is a gross understatement. Also, if you ever found yourself annoyed by the camera in the Ninja Gaiden games, prepare to have moments where you will absolutely loathe Metal Gear Rising. All of that being said though, I still think Metal Gear Rising is a good game. The question is whether it's a good game that's worth your $60, and to that question I just kinda have to answer with a maybe? If you love the genre and you're dedicated enough to spend time learning how the game's unique combat system works, and you are willing to play through it multiple times on the harder levels, then yeah, the game is worth the $60. Those who are interested in the game though because it's Metal Gear, or are curious because it looks awesome in trailers and screenshots, you might want to consider waiting for the price to get slashed.